Good morning. My name is Michelle Lombardo. Welcome to the Catholic Community of St. Francis Xavier in Hunt Valley. Today, we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. Our presider is Father Bruce Steggert. This Mass is being offered for Daniel O'Shea. We invite all children to an Easter egg hunt after Mass in the Mary Garden. Please join us after Mass downstairs at Parish Perk for hospitality and fellowship. Families, please join us for pizza, ice cream, and a family game night on next Saturday at 6 p.m. in the hall. Next week also, we are collecting casseroles. Please remember to take a pan and recipe on your way out. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, we invite you to join us after Mass in the chapel to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Please stand and turn to number 523. Christ the Lord is risen today. 523. My dear friends, we gather here once again by God's grace and we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May grace, peace, and the risen life of the Lord Jesus be with you all. As mentioned today, we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter. So it's the end of the Easter octave and we now go into the Easter season. So we spend yet another 40 days praying and being with God, recognizing that indeed God has been raised and the tomb is empty. Our hope, our joy, God's mercy. As we gather this day, indeed, we pray especially asking God's mercy upon us. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you've made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you've bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the, proceeds of, bring, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Stone that the builders rejected. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory, the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor? over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. 
Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, my God, Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. We can't tire of saying it, nor should we. It is the foundation of our faith. The tomb is empty. Paul has said, if Christ has not been raised, then all the rest of it falls apart. Christ has been raised, and we are here in testimony to stand for that reality that indeed the tomb is empty. And so it's an extraordinary celebration of days and days and days. If we could spend 40 days in Lent, we can spend 40 and plus 50 in the celebration of Easter, holding on to the hope, receiving the mercy, receiving the joy that's there. Indeed, we gather on this second Sunday of Easter. We gather on Divine Mercy Sunday, and I'll say a little bit more about that. I want to begin with a story about George in the Holy Land, say some things on our readings, and then return to a little bit on Faustina and our day today. The story about George goes like this. George and his family went to the Holy Land on sort of a trip pilgrimage, and very suddenly and unexpectedly, while he was there, his mother-in-law passed away. And so there was great crisis in the family trying to figure out what you do and what happens. So he went to the American consulate, and he asked, what would it cost to have her body shipped home? And they told her $25,000. And his eyes were a little bit big at that. But he said, what most people do when this event happens tragically is they'll bury the person here in Israel. And when that happens, it would probably only be a couple thousand. So George says, well, I need to think about it. So George waits a day, and he comes back to the consulate. And he says, no, I want to send her home. The person at the consulate is rather surprised given the price differential and says, wow, you must really have loved your mother-in-law. And George says, well, no, it's not really that. It's that I heard you know, a story a long time ago that there was this guy here, and after three days he rose from the dead, and I just can't take the risk. <laughs> now, why mother-in-laws always get the hang on the bat, I don't know. I don't know. But as we gather, it is the reality that Christ has been raised, and we will be raised. We didn't sing that particular song as our entry today, but it's our triumphant holy day. We're not simply here as cheerleaders to say, isn't that great? God was faithful. Jesus has been raised. That's a wonderful thing. No, it's about an invitation for us that God is faithful to us, and we will be raised. And we trust that, and we believe in it, and we stake our lives upon it. That's the message, and it can't be changed, nor should it be changed. Our readings, the first reading from Acts, talks about sort of the corporal works of mercy. So it talks about how the one community in mind were of one believer, and everybody had what they needed, because those who had more sold it and gave it. And so it very much fits in with our theme of this Divine Mercy Sunday. And then we hear in the second reading from Paul, it's kind of the spiritual works of mercy that were invited deeply, deeply into this union with Christ. 
where we find hope, where we find life, where we find joy. Finally, our gospel. It is, I think, inappropriately, and I've said this before, named Doubting Thomas. It's not about Doubting Thomas. It's about believing Thomas. Why? Who of us, in most cases, wants to be remembered for the very first thing we do? And would perhaps rather prefer to be remembered for the last thing that we do? So, Thomas's last thing is, my Lord and my God. I think that's a pretty profound statement. And if that was the last thing that we did, I think we'd be in good shape, my Lord and my God. And so we have that as a possibility, a reality, that invitation for us. You know, and is Thomas so different than us? We have our own doubts. I think there's always something inside us that said, well, if I'd been there with Thomas, and I had seen, and I had touched, it'd be a whole lot easier to believe. Well, I think that's one opinion. And I do think it's an opinion, because we have the testimony of 2,000 years of saint, and people all along the way who've given their lives and sacrificed in so many ways to uplift the church, to make it powerful, to make it clear. So all that testimony would be unnecessary. They're all people that I guess you can say didn't see, but believed. But we have the privilege of seeing as they did in our own experience of Eucharist, in our own experience of the corporal and spiritual works of mercy that are our church. So yes, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. There's no question that that's the case. I said I wanted to say a little bit about Faustina and then give an example of the corporate works of mercy. So if you don't know saying Faustina, she's from Poland, the apostle of divine mercy. So on April 30th of the year 2000, at 10 a.m. on the second Sunday of Easter, His Holiness, Pope John Paul II, celebrated the Eucharist in St. Peter's, canonizing Blessed Sister Faustina Kowalska. Why that day? That day in part of the vision was the one that Jesus had told her that would be requested as the celebration of divine mercy. So that's why it's here on the second Sunday of Easter. That same day, or that same, I should say, mark in the calendar, on April 27th in 2014, again, the second Sunday of Easter, Pope Francis canonized John Paul II. So what does so, what's so different about it? There's nothing different. There's nothing new. It's highlighting something incredible. So St. Faustina invites us by the witness of our life to keep what? Faith and hope and charity fixed on God the Father, rich in mercy. Pope Francis has said it over and over again. Who saved us by the blood and the precious blood. And during her short life, Faustina had three things assigned to her. Number one, she was to pray for souls, entrusting them what? To God's incomprehensible mercy. Two, to tell the world about that generous mercy. And three, to encourage a movement in the church focusing on it. At the canonization of Salt Faustina, Pope John Paul II said this, the cross, even after the resurrection of the Son of God, speaks and never ceases to speak of God the Father, who is absolutely faithful to his eternal love for us. Believing this love means believing in mercy, the Lord of divine mercy. And the painting is here, and maybe you have seen it before. It shows Jesus, what, with his right hand raised in blessing, his left hand from his heart, and you've got these two rays, red and white, coming out. There's a whole movie out that talks about how many artists Faustina had to try and get to paint it until she said, oh, this is what it's supposed to look like. But again, it's clear that she meant in some ways the red was for the blood of Jesus, and the life of souls are risen in baptism through the white waters on the other side. So it is this image of the mercy and forgiveness of love and of God. So yeah, there's nothing new. The only thing that was ever new is that Jesus Christ has been raised and the tomb is empty. And so we're embraced by that love. I was touched by remembering this example. Time Magazine, we don't read magazines so much in paper anymore, but in print, in 1984, had an image on the cover. It pictured a prison cell where two men sat on metal folding chairs. The young man wore a blue turtleneck, blue jeans, and white running shoes. The older man was dressed in a white robe and had a white skull cap on his head. 
They sat facing one another up close and personal. They spoke quietly so as to keep others from hearing the conversation. The young man was Mehet Aliagra, the Pope's would-be assassin. He had shot and wounded the Pope on May 13, 1981. The other man was obviously John Paul II, the intended victim. The Pope held his hand, that same hand that held the gun, his bullet tore through the Pope's body. It really is that living icon of mercy. John Paul's forgiveness was deeply Christian. His deed with Aliagra spoke a thousand words. He embraced his enemy and pardoned him. At the end of their 20-minute meeting, Aliagra raised the Pope's hand to his forehead as a sign of respect. John Paul shook Aliagra's hand tenderly. And when he left, he said this, what we talked about will remain a secret between us. I spoke to him as a brother whom I pardoned and who has my complete trust. That's what divine mercy looks like. That's what Easter looks like. That's what it's all about, that the tomb is empty and we choose to act upon it in love, forgiving the others, delighting in their presence. And so Easter isn't just a memory thousands of years ago. It's not just about eggs and straws and grass. It's about our own call and challenge to truly recognize that the tomb is empty. Christ has been raised. God is faithful. And we truly are celebrating our triumphant day. My dear friends, in great hope and trust, we stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends, gather this day again, trusting in God's love that the tomb is empty. Together as that community of believers, we now place our prayers and petitions before the risen Lord. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may he continue to shepherd the church through the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the world, especially those now suffering from the tragedies of war, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the baptized faithful, especially those newly initiated into the church at Easter, as well as for the young persons who received the sacrament of confirmation here last evening, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That divine mercy will wash away the doubt of any who reject the Lord and his resurrected life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the many whose lives have been disrupted now and perhaps for a long time in the aftermath of the bridge disaster, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For visitors at this Mass, may you always feel welcome here at St. Francis Xavier Parish, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of the Catholic community of St. Francis Xavier, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in ill health, especially Father Kevin Farmer, Linda Bowers, Jenks Cromwell, Mary Cromwell, Peter D'Alessandro, Joyce Harrigan, Gwen Cookner, Nancy Merritt, Allison Polk, Rini Stalter, Ed Vare, Merrill Watson, Leona Zawaki, and for all whose names have been written in the parish book of the sick, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Michelle Altoff Lamoureux, Catherine Gregg, and Richard Klein, as well as for the many who have lost their lives in warfare, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for other petitions which we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray this day, too, for Daniel Shea, who we're praying for especially. We want to pray on the first week anniversary for William and Bree for their entry into the church, and they're with us this day, so I don't want to overly embarrass them as they thought that part was over. But we're here to celebrate with them and celebrate their new life and with all who have joined churches everywhere as they enter into this time of mystagogy and prayer. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, your mercy extends to all the earth and calls us together in faith. May you walk in our midst this day and guide us to new life. In moments of doubt and despair, may we never forget that you are always near. We ask you to hear our prayers and grant them through that same Christ our Lord. Amen. As our gifts are offered and the table is prepared, please sing number 680, We Walk by Faith, 680. Oh. 
For my dear friends, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We may come up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light give rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all have risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, in all you've created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. Never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you. By that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts were brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and gave you thanks and the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Sepp was ended, he took the chalice. Give you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim in song the mystery of faith. <laughs> Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we attain inheritance with your elect, especially with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Ignatius, St. Francis Xavier, St. Faustina, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who was summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, we pray especially for Daniel O'Shea. And all are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we have to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord. You bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him, with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Gather this day in full recognition and believing and knowing that indeed Christ has been raised and the tomb is empty. We pray in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us give this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And, and lead, lead us, us not into temptation, temptation but deliver, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and you said to us, gather this very day, peace I leave you. Peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold, Lamb of God, behold Jesus the Christ, who came into the world to heal us, to love us, to lead us home to the Father. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please join in our communion hymn number 532, O Sons and Daughters, 532.
as been already mentioned, we're gathering on this Divine Mercy Sunday. So there are small prayer cards at the end of the pew that I'd like you to pass down, if you'd be so kind. We're going to recite together the closing prayer. You're going to be able to find the entire chaplet after Mass today in the chapel. But for now, we're just going to close with that closing prayer together. I'll give you a moment to pass those around. And for us of a certain age to put on glasses, too. <laughs> Ready? Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasure of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy. Amen. And let us pray. <clears throat> Grant we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. As we joyfully conclude our celebration, please turn to number 882 and sing, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones, 882.